and doing right by your client is spending time talking to your clients so that they have realistic expectations. Host Melissa Rosenblum is one of only a few women certified by the Supreme Court of New Jersey as a criminal trial attorney. When you add kids, a booming law business, and a little black book full of subject matter experts, you've got the Mighty Merp podcast and part four in this series. Yeah, it's de- it's definitely a numbers game. You have to ask 10 or 15 people before you even get a few. Not every single person is going to leave a review, and that's okay. That's why we ask the next person. Right. And but- I have clients that had a, or said that, you know, definitely, absolutely. And, and as you said it, life gets in the way. So, um, you know, I always say to my kids generally, this is going to go back to, I have all these sayings I say to my kids that I think, you know, apply to most life experiences, which is just ask. The worst they're going to do is say no, or they're not going to do it. But But if if you don't ask at all, they're never going to do it. If you don't ask, the answer is no. If you do ask, there's that possibility. It's that potential of a yes. And, uh, and so that's what I, that's what we do here. Um, well, and you brought up an absolutely amazing practice that I think every attorney needs to be doing. I'm, Melissa, how many free consultations have you given out given out over the years that that it never went anywhere? That person never hired you. Oh, I, I still give out thirty minute free consultations for every case, and it, uh, it creates it, a good a good atmosphere, a good you know a good interaction. Um, and sometimes I say I can't help people. I I don't I don't you know. I don't take cases that are not in my line of practice. And sometimes I have to assist them in other ways of telling them, you know, their options, but it's not always hiring an attorney. And it's still, it builds goodwill, Austin. That's what it does. Absolutely. And you need to do that. And I think most most firms do offer that free consultation, but a lot of people look at that free consultation almost as a waste of time if it doesn't go anywhere. I look at it as the opposite. Every free opportunity or every free consultation is an opportunity to get a review. If nothing else, get a review. And that review is going to pay dividends down the road. So weaponize that free consultation. If you at most great attorneys will know within a few minutes if that's Mm -hmm. actually going to turn into a case or not. If you recognize that, the first thing on your mind should be, okay, I'm going to provide this person with a world-class experience in the short amount of time that we're going to spend, and yes. I'm going to make sure that I, I ask them for a review. Because those are the people that are most likely, in my opinion, going to leave a review because they probably knew that they never were going to hire you. Maybe they were looking mm-hmm. for free, or they just really appreciate your time that you spent with them. So they're going to be more encouraged to be, hey, I, I'm not paying this person, and I just you know did just take 30 minutes of their time. Let me do this for them. I'll leave them a review because they asked me. Yeah. So weaponize that free consultation. Absolutely, absolutely. And it is true, you know, um, I do know within moments, you know, within the first minute or two, it doesn't change my interaction. But, you know, as you said it, you know, if I know that they're just trying to seek some general information, they had no intent of hiring an attorney, um, I still will engage in the consultation, but you know, I want it to be a positive experience. I do want it to be a shorter experience than the uh, 30 minutes and want them to leave feeling good about the interaction. So if they can't, and I also say you don't need an attorney, but in the future, if you need someone to handle traffic tickets for you or your family members, please consider us in the future. You know? Yep. You never know who that person is connected to. And you may have just given that person 10, 15 minutes of free time, but they may have, you may have just touched three or four people because they're going to go back and they're going to share your name with their friends and their family. They're going to leave you a review. So don't look at those, those consultations as a waste of time if they're not going anywhere. Make the most of them. And I think that's something that a lot of attorneys don't realize yet. Well, I agree with you on that. And I I do think many criminal attorneys do do free consultations. I don't know if that's true across the board. I mean, I do know family attorneys do. I know a few that charge uh, 
an initial consultation fee. I don't know in other areas of law because I, you know, when I say I stay in my lane, you know, I've been doing criminal law for 25 years and I was a public defender for the beginning part where I didn't even know how to look somebody in the face and ask them for a retainer fee. <laughs> That's I, all. It, it's much more common in the family law world. I def, I see that a lot there. Uh, and then the money obviously goes to the retainer and you know that, but I don't see it much in the criminal practice and I don't encourage it either. Um, mm -hmm. I, I look at what is your competition doing and how do you stand out with your competition? Well, if you're looking at your competitors who are fine attorneys and some of the best in the area and they're charging free consultations, if you're just starting up your own practice, who gave you the right? I right. understand you're there for the, it's, a, it's good for cash flow and you don't want to waste your time. But if you're looking at your competitors and they're not charging and they're great attorneys, yep. why would that person not just go to them then? Correct, correct. Don't, uh, don't turn someone away before they even answer, before they even walk in your door. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. And again, part of it is just having that interaction. So I am going to thank you profusely for your time and your insights and also always your help on, on a personal level with my business. But before we leave, I have some fun, very lighthearted questions, like a rapid fire question. Okay. All right. And, I wasn't uh, ready for this. I know. I, I don't like to give <laughs> you the heads up because it's more fun. So we're just going to go some easy things first. Uh, what books do you have on your nightstand or what books do you, are you reading right now? Wow, I'm going to look crazy here. Um, I am staring at a copy, copy of Helter Skelter, uh, <laughs> the Charles Manson sagas. Um, yes, I love a, good, uh, I love a good serial killer novel or documentary. That's so funny. I have concerns. Um, do you have a famous quote that inspires you or that you keep going back to in your life? So a famous quote, I have a few. I definitely love me a good motivational quote. Um, I think one of the ones that has been with me since I was a child um, is um, that, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. Uh, not the Kelly Clark Clarkson quote. I never wanted to use that because I always thought it was too girly. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it is by a German philosopher. I have no idea how to say his name, but that's kind of my go-to. Okay, that's good to know. Um, what do you do to relax or unwind or if you have any interesting hobbies? Right now, it's just being a dad and making sure that when I am, when I'm checked out, I'm checked out and I can give Zoe everything that she deserves. And if that's just sitting there watching her as she plays and smacks the countertop, I'm going to spend 10 or 15 minutes just doing that and watching her. And that is absolutely the best part of my day. That I listen. So I know your daughter is, uh, is she a year yet? No, she's only like no, she's, not. she's seven months and, and growing up by the day. Yes. And I would say enjoy every minute of it. All the cliches, all the advice is all true. Because as somebody whose youngest is turning 18 and will have four adults living in their house or attending college, I just wonder where it went and where are my babies. So it, it goes by fast and enjoy every moment of it. Um, and Zoe's adorable. I'm just going to add that. <laughs> Thank so, you. And then my last question, which kind of goes back to our conversation generally, um, and I think you'll appreciate is, what is your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't a, stop. We've talked so much about pink and your favorite colors. You've never asked me this. Mm -hmm. um, I am a big blue guy. My eyes are blue. I think I look best in blue. Um, yeah, I, I like blue. <laughs> and, and just so we're clear, because I've interviewed other people, and, and blue has come up. But the question is, what blue? Dark blue, navy blue, ocean blue, aqua blue? Hmm. It depends. 
are we talking about like my clothes? If we're wearing clothes, I love like the the comfort colors. Mm -hmm. Those like that, like the dusty blue. I love um, that you know what comfort colors are. <laughs> oh my god, they're the, they're, they make the best shirts. Um, yeah, the comfort color, like reds and like that, like kind of salmon color is always great. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, I think like light, light blue. Yep. Well, thank you again for joining me on the Mighty Merp podcast. And hopefully our listeners and audience will appreciate that uh, detailed discussion about advertising and marketing. This was fun, Melissa. I appreciate you inviting me on. This was a, this was a really good time. We hope you've enjoyed this series. Don't forget to subscribe, because before you know it, we'll be back with another great conversation. Mighty Merp is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your favorite apps and players. But the best way to experience the show is to visit MightyMerp.com. That's MightyMerp.com. Mighty Merp is a production of the Law Office of Melissa Rosenblum and the Niche Podcast Network.